Hi everyone, it's Jen with Cricut Inspiration and I am here today to teach you how to create a project that is larger than the Cricut mat can cut. I'm really excited to show you how to do this, so let's jump right in. I am here in Design Space. You can see that I have, I'm here on images, so I was on my canvas, here on images. I've just selected jack-o-lantern. So this will just show you all the different jack-o-lantern images that they have in Design Space. Remember, anything with the green little flag here is included in a Cricut Access subscription, which means it's free. There are options that are free too. You can search for those. I wanted to show you a few of these different um, different images to give you an idea of which ones I like best. So while these cute jack-o'-lanterns are just that cute, these different ones, I like ones that are a little more solid for projects like this. It makes them a little bit easier to put together, easier to not have like random little pieces left over. So for the sake of this um, demonstration, because we're going to pretend like you've never done this before, this is brand new, I'm going to use this image here, mostly because as you can see, the pumpkin itself is solid. It's already, you know, like just few little pieces and stuff. These little strings I mean, or like vines, I think they'll be fine because um, we're going to be cutting them big anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and select this guy. I'm going to click add to canvas. So we're going to let him get on here. So right now, if I just tried to cut this out, then he would be 2.51 by 2.7 inches. That can obviously be cut on any mat. So what you need to decide is how big you want your pumpkin or whatever your image is to be and keeping in mind what size mats and materials you have for the project. So a normal mat can cut 11 and a half inches by 11 and a half inches. I'm actually going to zoom out because we're going to be making him pretty big. So a normal mat is 11 and a half inches by 11 and a half inches cutting room. The 12 by 24 mat is 11 and a half inches by 23 and a half inches because you need that quarter inch all the way around. So if I'm going to be using 11 and a half by 23 and a half as my shape, I obviously want this guy to be bigger than that. So you can see right now my width by doing this, my width is 17.534 and my height is 18.872. So the great thing about this particular project is while he's too wide to cut on one mat, he's not too tall. So I would be able to cut this in just a couple of mats. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Really quick, you can see over here on the layers panel, see this little error, like the little orange triangle. It's just saying it's too large. Um, it has to be, so because I have selected that I'm using an Explore 3, I could go up to 11.7 and 144 inches if I was using Smart Material. We'll get into that. <clears throat> or actually, we probably won't get into that on that, this, because I'm not cutting anything that big. This is for if you had any machine. Obviously, if you have the joy, you're going to have to go quite small with this process. So the next thing I'm going to do, so I've got this guy set. He is too wide to be cut on any Cricut mat. So now I'm going to come over here to shapes and I'm going to create a shape that is the size of my cutting area. So right now it's little, it's just three inches. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to unlock it. So up here on my um, size panel thing, and this can be done in the mobile devices as well. And you just have to use, you know, the different areas for that. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock that. I'm going to make my width 11.5 and my height, 23.5. So now I have a rectangle. Let's go ahead and zoom out even farther. I have a rectangle that is the same size as my cutting space on my mat. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to send this to the back so it's behind, and I'm going to set it here on my pumpkin. So now you have some options because we have room. You can set this so that it's as close to the edge as possible and as close to the top. This will save you material, um, but it won't give you a project that's cut, like your cut line won't be directly in the middle. Because this is going to be just like a um, shadow type image on my window, I'm not really worried about that. So what you can do here is select both of these, so remember when you're doing slice, you can only have two layers selected at a time. 
So slice is available down here on my layers panel and I can hit slice. And now what that's going to do is it's going to cut once it actually, oh, did I click off of it on exit? Or is it just taking a minute? Okay, there it goes. It was just being slow for a second. All right, so now if I come over here to my layers panel, I can get rid of my rectangle and I can get rid of this slice result. So now what I have are two parts of my pumpkin and now they are both the right size for a mat. So you can see this one is 16.231 inches tall by 6.28228 inches wide. So this will fit on an 11 by 24 mat. And this one is only 11.306 because I didn't want it right on the edge of the paper and 18.882. So also can fit on a 12 by 13 mat. I mean a 12 by 24 mat. So we've got this. That's how you would do it if you were just working with something that was just a little large. Um, okay, now I'm going to undo and we're going to go back to having a solid, cute little pumpkin. I'm just going to undo until I have all of my slice stuff undone. All right, so now I'm going to show you what happens. Maybe you don't have a 12 by 24 mat, or maybe you want something that is even bigger than what would fit on a, or a 12 by 24. So if you only have a 12 by 12, then we need to resize this to 11 and a half by 11 and a half. Nope, I didn't unlock it. 11 and a half by 11 and a half. So now I've got a square and you can see that I'm gonna have to do this a few times, right? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to do this if you needed to have multiple steps. So again, we're gonna line our guy up close to the top edge, but not right on it because I don't want it to cut off any of my sides. So I feel like it's still a little, there we go. All right, so we've got this. So I'm gonna select these two pieces. I'm gonna hit slice. And I don't know why this is running slow at the moment. Hopefully it's because they're getting ready to give me the new background remover. I'll be talking about that later if you haven't seen it, but I don't have it quite yet. All right, so over here in our slice results, you can see we've got this piece here. I don't need that anymore. We've got this gray piece. I don't need that anymore. I just want my original pieces. So I've got this piece here. That's the part that we sliced out. It's 11.3 by 11.24. So we'll definitely fit on 11 by 11 and a half. But this guy here, you can see I'm still getting my orange error. So I need to slice him again. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a square again. And we're going to go ahead and change the size of the square to 11 and a half. And that'll just change it all the way around and move it to the back so I can see. You don't have to move it to the back. I just like to be able to see my image on it. Okay, so now again, you have a couple options. Do you want your cut line lined up exactly where it was or do you wanna save material? Again, because I don't need to worry about my lines being crazy perfect because I am um, just using this as like an outline shadow look. I don't care. But if I do this, then look what's gonna happen. I'm gonna show you really quick. I'm gonna end up with a weird piece right here. So these are just things to remember so that you can see. So if I slice this, now while we wait, I feel like I need some like Jeopardy music or something. Okay, so now I have this piece. So because this is, so I can delete this one and delete this one. Because this is still a solid piece, like I didn't leave anything weirdly floating. I'm totally fine with this. So I can bring him over here. You can see lines up great. But we still, oh, look, I missed like a tiny bit. So see, you gotta be super careful about not having them. Um, so now I'm gonna go back and move that and undo. And move that square down just a little bit. All right, so now I've got my square. So I can move this guy up just a touch. There we go. So now, oh, no, I still feel like you can't. Okay, now I can see gray all along the bottom. So now select the two, go ahead and hit slice. We're gonna end up with that same kind of weird 
shape left. It's just, it becomes like a puzzle and you just have to decide how and what you, um, like how you care about the pieces being cut. Do you want like just kind of one line down the middle or whatever? So now I've got these two and now I still have this piece. So unfortunately, notice that this is still too big to cut on a 12 by 12 mat. So because in this scenario, I don't have a 12 by 24, I need to do one more cut of 11 and a half. So we've got our square again. Go ahead and send that to the back. And then I can lay this out and I can, like, I can do it however I want. I can have it so it's using as little material as possible. So I've just barely got... So see, I've got a little bit of gray here and a little bit of gray here, so I'm not gonna leave anything hanging. Select those two pieces, hit slice one last time. Get that all sliced. And my computer that's running really slow this morning. I just like to delete the gray versions of the slice. That way I know that I'm left with all of my original pieces. So then I've got this piece that's gonna sit here, and then this last piece is finally small enough to fit and it's kind of hard to do this on the screen like this it's well maybe if I zoom in so remember I mean this guy's pretty big this is only at 50% size um when you have the pieces laid out it's a lot easier to get like all of your edges lined up and stuff but here we go so now I have this guy that still looks like a pumpkin jack-o-lantern but he's cut into four pieces to make it much easier to be able to cut out and make it big. So remember, let's see how big this guy was once we, so he is going to be 17 and a half inches wide and almost 19 inches tall when we cut him out. So I'll be back in just a second and I will show you what this looks like for putting it together and cutting it out on your machine. We get to the actual cutting, I wanted to show you what it is going to look like on um, the cut screen or the mat screen here. So you can see project copies, I'm just cutting out one of these. And because of the size, I wanna go here to mat three, because of the size of those pieces, they actually were able to be moved so they're both cutting on one. So while I have four different pieces for this jack-o-lantern, it's going to cut them on three different mats instead of four. So just three 12 by 12 pieces. So if I go ahead and select continue, then it's going to connect to my maker. Hopefully it doesn't take too long, there we go. And I'm going to select that I am using a medium cardstock. And then I'm just going to leave the pressure at default. And then, sorry, my husband's working on some constructions if you hear that hammering in the background. But then I'm just going to load my mat into my machine and I'll jump over there and show you what I'm doing. Okay, for the sake of time, I have three mats loaded with black cardstock. I'm just using a regular standard black cardstock. I think it is Cricut brand, but it's out of the packaging, so I can't say that for sure. Make sure it's under the rollers. Go ahead and select load. I know I did say earlier when I was setting it up that I was using the Explore 3. My maker was already out, so I'm using that instead. So I did have to change that on the machine. So if you're ever running into a problem where you are like your machine is not connecting, I would definitely check and make sure that you have the right type of machine selected on Design Space. All right, it's loaded. We're gonna go ahead and push play and let it cut. And then we'll change out and do this three times.
All right, now that everything is cut out, I'm going to go ahead and remove my cardstock from the Cricut mat. I've showed you guys this before, but I prefer, especially when dealing with cardstock, to flip the mat over and peel the mat back off the cardstock. Go nice and slow so you don't rip anything. Make sure everything gets released. But this prevents your cardstock from peeling, or not peeling, curling, which, especially when we're trying to piece things together, is not something we want to happen. All right, now that we have all of our pieces cut, I will show you how I'm going to tape it together so I can put it on my window. All right, I told you guys that when I was making this, when I was slicing everything, that I was trying to make sure that I didn't have any little random pieces. But I have this piece right here that I was obviously not paying attention to. So that is the finished piece for that. Now, um, the taping it together is pretty easy. I'm just going to use regular Scotch gift wrap tape and I'm gonna start putting the pieces together. Something that I learned before, sorry about background noises, kids are getting home, was that even when, if you can see this, even when I thought I had them exactly right, lined up right next to each other, light still came through. And so this time I'm going to overlap them a tiny bit. Overlapping them a little bit should not affect the way where it comes together at the edge. And I do like this type of tape because I feel like better than some, it kind of blends in a little bit. You're not gonna get anything that is um, perfect. Now they are compressors going off. Too many projects happening in the house today, real life, right? So, so now you can see I have it a little bit too high down here. So I'm gonna have to lift this. And this, I really do feel like is just, you're gonna have to do it and just keep messing with it a little bit if that makes sense. Cause you're gonna wanna make sure that the things line up. And if you can't get them to overlap and be lined up, that's fine. I feel like it wasn't crazy noticeable once it was dark, dark. In fact, I think I'm gonna not overlap that because it's affecting this up here. So we're just gonna line them up really close and hope that those lines don't show. And I'll be back when he's done hammering. All right, got a little loud here for a second, so I just cut the sound and sped that up a little bit. But you can see I've got all of my pieces taped together. I did use my True Control knife on these thin little pieces to cut off the extra tape, so that way I didn't have to worry about like it sticking through or anything. So this is obviously the back side. Flip it over, and this is what the front side looks like, a little dusty. So then when it's on the wall or on the window, it will just be this nice flat 
and from a distance for sure, you will not even be able to tell that it is pieced together. I'll grab a picture of that to show you what the finished product looks like. Isn't it so cute? I love it. I can't wait to add a few more things. I'm definitely gonna do a witch again and probably a haunted house. And I do have a few more windows, so we'll see what I decide to add on all of those.